Отлично, труба. Theaters across the country are showing the passion of the Christ, but only a select few know what it took to make a film of such great significance. Obviously, Jim Caviezel is one of them, and it wore on him to the point where he was angry and yelling at God. At one point, I remember yelling out, you obviously don't care. Here we are breaking our backs for you. And at that, at that point, this cross is swaying from four feet from one direction to the next and I'm on a thousand foot cliff. If that thing snaps, I'm toast. It, it was mean, over. And Mel didn't know what to do. It was just, we were in the middle of a shot and all of a sudden the wind coming up this canyon. It's like going to the Grand Canyon and sticking mm -hmm. a cross at the edge of it. it. It's all cemented in and, and you know, you think you're, you're safe, but then when those winds go, it's going back and teetering back and forth. And the hypothermia was uh, um, horrendous. Uh, you're itching all over the place. I had a shoulder separation, if you've ever gone through one of those. And uh, I thought, well, we got it. And then the next day, we watched the, the film, and it looked great and whatnot. And, and Mel says, we can't use it. And I said, what do you mean we can't use it? You know, uh, literally yelling at him, what do you mean we can't use it? He says, if they're focused on that cross, they're not focused on my Jesus. They're going to be looking at that thing going back and mm. forth. He said, forget it. No, we're doing it again. Well, that went for another five weeks, just the crucifixion scenes Three. alone. Three. Five weeks of this? Just for the crucifixion scenes. Karina <laughs> Gar! Oh. Isaiah the prophet said that Jesus was so disfigured and he was beaten and bruised so much that he was hardly recognizable as a person. We didn't even go there. We didn't even go to the full what we what we read and what you're reading right there. We wanted people to get a, the visceral reaction of he's still human, you still see him, and, the, and, the, and keep them both, because there's something about how it can be so repulsive and, and so much that you kind of shut off, mm -hmm. and we didn't want that. We wanted to take it to the point, but to keep people there. It, it, it's been rumored, I don't know how true this is, that as you were filming this, you were hit with lightning? Yes. That's true. I was lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> You. I, it was, it was a shot I was doing on the Sermon on the Mount, and I knew it was going to hit me about four seconds before it happened. I said, I'm going to get hit. And when it happened, it was, uh, I saw the extras grab the ground in front of me. What they uh, saw was fire coming out the right and left side of my head and illumination around the whole body. And, Mel, there was a, during the shot, they said, do you have it on camera? Actually, what happened was he, he said, action, and as the camera's panning, coming to me, right around here is where this light just generated. When he came, uh, when he got, by the time he got to me, you, I, I hear Mel screaming out, you know, what the heck happened to his hair? I mean, I look like I went to see Don King's hairstylist. Five minutes after I get hit, got hit, Jan Michelini, one of the assistants, walks over and says, are you okay? Then he got hit, and I said the difference was the, that they saw the bolt come down and hit Jan. They didn't see that um, when I was standing there. And I never, all I felt was this, 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 like a giant, tremendous slap on my ears in about eight seconds of uh, like a pink red static in front of my eyes. You had, you had a literal miracle in the set. I mean, what do you attribute? I mean, you could have died. People could hit with lightning playing golf and they die. Yeah. Um, or get incinerated, it's Jan. Yeah. But there was a, the hairiest thing about it is Jan, who came up to me, had already been hit. And it, it, I mean, three lightning strikes on one film, one guy getting hit twice, and me getting hit, obviously, the one time. But, uh, and there were a lot of miracles. 
uh, other than that, kind of a miracle. I mean, on the set? Well, you know, we one of the guys was a Muslim on the, on the film. The, one of the uh, guards that, w that beat me um, converted. Um, had a real big experience in there, you know. But what was going on in the, f and what we had so many prayers worldwide yeah. for what we were going through. And I really believe that was important because once that started happening, people started praying for us. Those prayers have supported this film and helped bring it this far. So what does Jim think about it now? Where does this film sit with those who understand what it took to make this movie? All the actors that worked on this film, some are not going to accept it, but the opportunity will always be there for them. But here's the other thing. It will stay with them the rest of their lives. Yeah. People are always going to come up to them. They'll always ask them about the movie they were in. It will always haunt them. What do you think it's going to do to your career? And if it did blow it out of the water? Right. This is what I feel. I believe I was called to play this role. I always felt in my heart, I didn't know if I was the right guy. Maybe he doesn't always choose the best, but he chose me. And I had an opportunity to say yes. And so I said yes. And so when I look out to all my fellow Americans and people in the world, I say to them, I want you to go out into to this public and shamelessly express your faith in public. And that's what I've done here. And I can let it rest as it is. I don't know where, it, where it's going, but if it doesn't turn out, in, where I'm continually working. I'm still an actor. I'll always be one, regardless if I get another job or not. But I fulfilled my mission right now. I felt what I was supposed to do right now. That's, uh, that was my opportunity. And I would have done it again.